Now we begin. The first episode is going to be more about like the what the champion's about, abilities, uh, gameplay. So your the general strategy on a, on York. I'm versus first one versus Camille with Ignite, so I'm a little bit careful to see if she dashes into me or not. She's being passive, so I can go for Q level one. But yeah, so first I'm going to start with Q. And what I'm trying to do is get these little graveyards you, th you see. And one way to get that is from last hitting minions with your Q. The other way is through your passive passive. And what we want to do is we want to build these up. What we can do is turn these into ghouls. We can either, I can press Q right now and we can get ghouls. Or if I land my E, once I get it at level two, I can press that and get ghouls. And we, what we want to do is it's level one, build up these graveyards. And then if we land E, you'll see all these little dudes spawn and they'll attack. We'll go while well, she's going for that CS. It's a good time to do it. And we'll go for that. That's a really good trade. And our goal is to utilize these ghouls to create pressure for us. And here I'm going to do it. Oh, okay. Right. So you want to hit your E. Your E is like this like, kind of awkwardly angled uh, ability. But very much like if you're an Alawe enjoyer like myself, it really is the core of your setup. I use my Q to secure that. York is really fun. I, I absolutely adore this champion. We're going to be doing... So this series I'm doing... My goal is to do 50 games. 50 games. Walk you through the first few uh, episodes. are going to be helping you introduce you to the champion. How to... how to, What the strategy is. And what the mechanics are. And I, my goal is to help you pick up York if you're interested. So I, I personally absolutely love this champion. So much fun. The macro, I do not know. It, it, it's great to teach you macro. It's really good for that. You can you can farm multiple waves at a time. You want to learn how to push and pull the wave. It's about setting up, much like a Laue is, your combos. Oh, he's pushing it away from me. That's unfortunate. I was going to use the pressure generated top to run down. Uh, at level three, you can get your wall. This wall is important. It's So the whole combo, what you're looking for is to set up ghouls. And then you want to land your E. What happens then is all the ghouls spawn and attack the enemy champion. And then you wall them in. So they, they're they kind of forced in this position where they're getting destroyed by ghouls. So they don't want to hit the wall because they want to hit the ghouls. But they don't hit the ghouls. Or if they don't hit the wall, they're trapped in with the ghouls. Like this catch-22. Because the way your wall works is right now at level one if they if the enemy team hits it twice then it'll break if they don't hit it twice it'll stay up for it doesn't even say how oh it doesn't no it doesn't it doesn't say how long it's like four seconds or something oh no oh no this is a fresh account so we'll see hopefully i don't lose episode one i am sure i'm gonna do a lot of these series i'm gonna do a uh, nar and and volley bear so i'm i'm bound to to start off with losses at some point I'm not too worried about like the win loss. I'm not going for a hyper high win rate. If I want to do that, I would do a Q and I would and I would probably not record videos while I do this. My goal is to not be try to try to avoid the egoism of having this hyper high win rate just because I'm a like a challenger rated player, right? My goal is to merely teach. York is my second main champion. I absolutely love this guy. Oh no. In the next episode, I'll talk more about runes and, uh, and items. So, typically, you'll you actually see me max a W a lot. And this is something I do that's really off off kelter from most people. If you aren't sure at the, the max, just max Q every game. It's perfectly acceptable. No one's ever going to get mad at you. But what I'll do that's different than a lot of York players is I'll max W first if the enemy champion does not have a movement ability. So... I'm not going to do it versus Camille, because if I W Camille, she can just wall hop out of it. And that's, that's you know, it just is what it is. Any champion with a dash, you don't really want to W max. But champions without a dash, let's say a Teemo. Well, now they're they're literally locked in a cage. And most of your damage isn't really from your Q. Most of your damage is from your ghouls. If your ghouls can just hit the enemy player, they can't really react. Then you're going to get, that's where most of your damage comes from. And your W, your full combo is E. 
W and then walk up and cue them. So your W, reducing the cooldown on this, is also really important because it increases the number of combos you can get in lane, uh, like full combos off. Because what happens is anytime this is on cooldown, you're going to see me go for full combos less and less. I'm a big fan of Trinity Force Doric. Some people will go for Divine Sunder. I think the the way you play Yorick is not really this drain tank. You play it more like a mage. You want to land your E, land your W, walk up, and Q them every three seconds. Every time your Q comes up, you kind of want to walk in to hit them. Beautiful. Wall here. He's running Ignite. Not worth, not worth. Come on back. Oh, and I'm level six, so level six is the fun part of this champion. You get Maiden, your your actual queen. Now, you do not want your Maiden to die. That's priority number one. If I get Camille's Flash for free and she doesn't have Teleport, she's going to have to reset. And some players would actually try to dive, and diving can get you killed in that situation. Because she can ult you, she can ignite you if you don't know where the enemy jungler is or top laner is then diving here would have been very high risk and not really a great reward. Because you see what happens if I don't dive. She has to leave. She has to reset. And I get a ton of reward anyways. It's it's really a better option just to... Um, just to relax. See what she does. I do have a deer on my side. I'm going to reset because maintenance is a little bit lower. I did get a lot of health. I want to go ahead and get Sheen. Sheen is really strong in this champion. How's the game looking so far? Three to five. That's that's like, that's fine. I can just E Akali in the mid game. And when I E Akali, all my stuff will just attack her anyways. So we can track her pretty easily. I can handle Akali if I had Akali. Uh, so the Maiden. The Maiden is one of the most intricate parts of this champion. You don't... So you don't move Maiden like Annie ult or, or um, Ivern ult. You do not press R again to move her. She moves with you. She kind of moves based on how you play. Uh, well, it's a, it might take me a whole episode just to talk about like what all she does. I don't really want to go for this. Oh, stop hitting my maiden. Uh, so the first thing is she does drain. She does AP damage that drains kind of the enemy, so to speak. And every few seconds when you hit the target that she's hitting, you'll deal bonus magic damage. So those are really the DPS portions of maiden. Also, if maiden's hitting something, and you don't have and you hit and you kill it. Oh, hold on, am I done? Dead yet. I need to hit an A, that'd be a good start. Oh, we can just push this? We can dive for sure. Oh, this turret is not saving you, bud. The slow. Oh, your E also slows. No, 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 no. Dang. I didn't know if he had flash or not. Yeah, so you see I'm spawning all these ghouls because of my ult. Let's go ahead and take this. Your maiden is is really all of your power. It does not despawn and it has to be killed. You can also send it down side lane. So really, what is York about? York is a macro game machine. What are they doing? Okay, they're crazy. Okay, you're done. <laughs> yeah, you're done. <laughs> that ain't gonna work, buddy. Again, this is pretty low elo to start. The idea of the series is to, to sh give y'all an array of matchups, start at um, an average elo for most people, and show how I would go about climbing. No copium, none of that crap. Uh, Long-term strategy, 50 games, maybe 100, depending on how good the series is going. See how I, high I can climb on it and hopefully show you some tricks and tips that you can climb as well. Uh, so back to the Maiden. We're going to talk about this for a while. Maiden uh, it scales with your health, your max health, and also scales with your AD, the amount of magic damage she deals on her drain. And where this gets interesting is sending Maiden down side lane. So if you do press R again, you can press R again. What happens? It sends Maiden down whatever lane she's closest to at the time. 
and she will she will kill the minions she'll farm the minions and as she kills minions ghouls will spawn and she will actually push a wave on her own she's very weak and if you die maiden dies very quickly afterwards so you really you what you want to do this is really the macro like big brainness of this champion when dragon spawns or baron is spawning and people are actually contesting that objective what you want to do is you want to wait for a lane to kind of push into you yeah. okay oh you can farm jungle really well this uh, champion so like let's say what i want let's say dragon spawning in a minute i want top lane to be the wave to be here or here and i want to send maiden down that lane so what happens is and then i go to the fight what happens is she starts pushing down the lane and farming a lot and I go to a fight and I just use my E's and W's to just kind of assist. I don't really want to like hard commit to any fight. I just want to hang out. I don't want to die. Maiden's farming for me. I just want to be annoying and kind of help my team win the fight, hopefully. It's here because uh, there's plates up. Use my walls just to protect Maiden a little bit. You can direct Maiden to hit things. Maiden kind of hits things that you attack. So first, if you E something, she'll attack it. She'll you see the aggro there. And also, you can kind of direct her through your auto attack. So if you're in lane, and you've, you probably saw me earlier, she was kind of near the, the turret range. And what I did was I auto attacked the minions to get her to kind of, kind of, come on back, Maiden. You don't want to be that far up. So that's how you move Maiden. You either get her to be aggressive through E's onto champions or objectives. And you kind of get her to come back by, by autoing something that's not like what she's already targeted. Really good Rift Herald. Nice. So you've seen what I've done this game. I push. I kind of push top out because I have the priority. And then I rotate. Push, rotate, push, rotate. And here, you'll see the ghouls, once they start fighting in a lane, you can leave and they'll keep pushing. So this is another part of the macro game of uh, Yorick. We'll see if I die here. Oh. Do I get this real quick and leave? Run. Oh, we leveled up Maiden. Yes. One thing that was really good this game. I didn't lose Maiden before level 11. At each level up, the cooldown goes down a good bit. 25 seconds per level up. And that's really important. First off, when you level up uh, your R, Maiden is tankier, has more health at, at the very least. Which is important. It's important never to lose Maiden. I'm serious. She is a queen. So having her be really healthy is really good. Late game, she can she can literally solo people in the sidelines if you build the right items. I'll talk more about items next next episode, episode two. My goal is to set episode one be abilities, kind of strategy. Uh, episode two is going to be more about items and runes. And then episode three is probably matchups, maybe some more strategy stuff if we haven't gotten into it yet. But mainly we'll start getting to matchups and then the episodes from, from then on out are going to be more focused on how do you play individual matchups. Hopefully I get a good array. One of the big complaints I have with playing in the high elo is... Come on. Okay, that was kind of unfortunate. Go Maiden. Hmm. They killed me a lot quicker than I expected. I need Hole Breaker. Also, a collar is already rotating. Hmm. Dex is really tanky. I should have focused more on Camille. My flash wasn't great. I tried to, like, kind of kite them a little bit. <laughs> okay. We almost have the Hole Breaker. I mean, saw this, are we close? 40, oh, we could wait, we could wait. Yeah, I think we do wait. I I really don't mind giving up these tier ones on Yorick. Yorick benefits from a very extended top lane. Again, because what I can do is I can wait for this top lane to push, like let's say the tier one's dead. This wave will eventually push into the tier two 
And then I can send Maiden here with this drag spawning in a minute 30. And Maiden will push from here to here during the course of the fight. If you have teleport up, what you can do is you can send Maiden down top, go to the fight. Hopefully your team doesn't end or you do reasonably well enough or you just live long enough to teleport out of the fight. And you just teleport to the side lane where Maiden is and you just start destroying turrets. A lot of people, if you start first picking up this champion, will just purely split push. I think that will do well to a point. Eventually, you do need to have some more intricacy in how you play. Here, I might actually just split push. We already see Jax on Akali bot side. I kind of blocked my cannon there from going under turret, so I want it to live a little bit longer. Yeah, you just see my split push capability is so strong. off my cues. Nice. Let's get out of here. They're all resetting. Oh, they didn't take Drake. Look, they sent four top instead of going Drake. That's great. This trick isn't the biggest seal in the world, to be honest. I definitely should have taken it. I could reset. To help them. I'm gonna recall where I don't think Camille would definitely not have a word. Or at the very least, I can react if she does go for me. No. Alright, that was kind of troll. What do we want next? I like Hydra. Hydra's okay. There's a lot of different avenues I can go. Oh, no, Grudge. Never mind. Grudge is amazing on this champion. The slow. The way Grudge works on Yorick is if you ever land a slow, your E, your, your ghouls will also, and Maiden will all also slow the champions. They just deal an absolute massive amount of damage. And the and this is this is the item you want to build if you want your Maiden to like 1v1 people in the side lane. That's one of them. Different avenues you can go on items. I've done a lot of work, and you're gonna. And I can show you in the post game. I'll have a lot of gold, even though I'm only one, one, and two. The dead shall forgive me. I a lot of gold topside. I'm hoping that their team rotates to here. They're not. You can just see my ghouls are just soloing. Uh, okay, never mind. I'm trolling. Oh, we're really trolling. My goodness. Oh. Alright, so I can't be here. Obviously. My goodness. We're gonna get the, the trade kill topside. Hmm. I just, I had to not walk up. I had to back off. So this is where the split pushing kind of nuances of split pushing come into play. Without having seen their bot lane, I needed to just let them like show mid or, or top. That was just my mistake. I, I I have to just back off there and just wait. You just have to wait like 30 seconds. Not the biggest deal in the world. Here we will teleport mid and try to help them out. Hopefully they don't end before I get there. This doesn't look very good. Definitely not looking very good. It looks surprisingly okay. Oh, looks okay. Looks okay. Boom. Big time play from my team. Good stuff. Oh, we can do work with this. Good bot. What I love about York is the gold per minute potential of like properly farming jungles, bending ghouls down, down lane, sending your maiden down a lane during some sort of objective. So like here what I'm gonna look for is on this next Drake, Ari's pushing right now. 
they're going to react by pushing this back into us. What I want to look for is sending Maiden down top at at about a minute and 20 from now. That's what I'm going to be looking for, which should line up right with this lane pushing back into us. Then I'll just send Maiden down top. Oh, sorry, hold on. Hello. Uh, medium. Right. Thanks. Bye. Sorry. Uh, important call. When the wife calls, you always pick up. Never know when it's an emergency. It was not an emergency. I'll let you know. God. Like, so I can't push here, although I really want to. We see Leona. Maybe push. I have to be prepared to 1v2 the Akali. There. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to stay up here. I'm going to have to back off. Mule didn't push top very quickly. My strat wasn't going to... Yeah, we'll just go back and we'll send Maiden on top. We're going to just send Maiden on top. And I'm going to go to the fight. Dang, I really want to show this off because it's really important to Yorick. But I don't even think I need it to this game. Like right now, I probably don't need to send Maiden top. Maiden? Where is she? There she is. Yeah, she'll kind of do this thing if there's no wave where she'll kind of wait for the wave. Which is good, because then she won't into turret without a wave. And that's what you want. You want her to push in with the wave. Their team's doing pretty well there. They're doing well, then I can push. Behind me. Woo! I love that champion! Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, ghouls. Finish her. No, I played that so well. Uh, actually, if I had Grudge, we get the play there. It was so vital that I sidestep the uh, the Qs from Akali. Those are, Akali Qs are really hard to sidestep. I feel good that I was able to do it. Our team's just cleaning up in the meantime. Oh, are they? I didn't play the uh, beginning of this fight well at all. I didn't expect Akali to still have R. After all that fighting. And you see Maiden just doing work, so I split her. And as she's doing that, she'll send any extra ghouls to you. Nice. We could probably just end, but I'll just get the trick. Yeah, and this is what happened. So I press R near top when I did that. See Maiden just pushing away. And we'll look at the after game stats. We'll look at gold. Uh, oh, I got the last set on the next brief. Nice little extra 50 gold. Game one provisionals. I don't, I don't, again, I don't know what rank this is. Uh, we'll just see. The goal is to, I think after 50 games on a fresh account, I should be about diamond. That's about where this uh, playthrough should end. Maybe I'll push to masters. But again, the initial games are just kind of warming up. Getting, getting used to everything. Good year to find. Bronze, too. I uh, did not do top damage. Cogma, not too surprising, did top damage. Golly. Yeah, sets are okay. Let's look at the gold accumulation. That's always what's interesting. Oh, gold accumulation and turret damage. We'll look at it versus Camille. Yeah, I mean, really good job accumulating gold quicker than Camille could. I, I like to look at 15 minutes. 15 minutes, we're at 2.6k gold lead. Really short, uh, solid for sure. Advantage. And if you look at it at 15 minutes, 2.6k of this 4.6k gold lead was us. Then we'll look at uh, turret damage to champ. Or sorry, turret damage. Hold on, sure. It's, yeah, this is real. Oh, it's so fun. Trinity Force, Hole Breaker, Demolish, just destroying turrets. Really, really nice. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out game two tomorrow. We'll talk on uh, talk about uh, the summoner spells and item build I prefer. If you enjoy, I'll see you all tomorrow.